Well, here we are in the Zama Goldfield and we've got an extraordinary sight. Um, this is uh, in Mongolia, but there's actually three small Chinese dredges, bucket line dredges, to a, a traditional Chinese, almost home-built design. Um, and they're mining not raw material, they're remining the tailings of um, left behind by a large dredge, which is a classic Siberian Russian dredge. Like this one right over here. It. Yeah. And the the problem for this dredge is the big dredge is it's designed for river gravels and it's excellent at that. But here it's confronted with river gravels with gold on top of red clay with even more gold. And the trommel on this big brute <laughs> just throws out with the oversize at the rear end not only rocks but also enormous balls of clay. Uh, what you see at the Chinese dredge is doing, they're remining not the fines from the sluice, they're way down under the water, they're remining the uh, oversize that's gone out at the end of the rear stacker of the Siberian Russian dredge. What this means then is that the clay balls of course soften with time after a few months, um, but still it's difficult to believe these other dredges are recovering most of the gold from the, from the deposit. And until security tightened up, there was always, night and day, 300 local people making good money being behind the <laughs> Russian dredge. Um, the, the, the tragedy of the local people is the crews of these little dredges are Chinese, because the dredges are Chinese built, and Mongolians have a fear of water. They are uh, only now uh, becoming accustomed to swimming even. And of course the big dredge being Soviet in origin uh, is dominated by Russian technicians and so forth. So the local job opportunity for this is uh, very small indeed. Uh, true, the Mongolian government gets the gold um, and pays for it, but that's in Ulaanbaatar, the capital city, which is already over overheating. Out here the poverty remains. The right hand Chinese dredge it's got going. And you can see that the uh, top tumbler is now struggling to topple the bucket. The buckets are squarish because they're homemade out of iron rather than cast steel. Um, and then they slide down and they go under a spray bar. And there there's a static or vibrating screen, depending on which kind of thread it is, which takes the thing to a sluice that's directly below. By the way, I don't think we're rushing for here. This is okay, because the Russian company is the back. Alright. Russian Mongolian company. Well, that's moving, moving a lot of material. It is. And uh, the pontoon you see is pretty big. Well, uh, they think the, 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 they think we're Russians? Well, yeah, because we're, uh, we're not Mongolian or Chinese, I think. 